I'm Richard Wesley, and it's my privilege to be the pastor here at St. Bethlehem United Methodist Church. I am glad that you have joined us today, because today we're looking at who Jesus is and how a man named Phil introduced his friend Nate to Jesus. Now, if you already know Jesus, I know that you would like your friends to also know Jesus. But how do you do that? How do you introduce your friends to Jesus? Well, Phil does it in a real natural conversation. He doesn't memorize a prepared speech. He doesn't even memorize Bible verses and say, oh, listen to this. He just naturally talks to his friend about things that him and his friend are interested in. I want you to pay attention this morning to how Phil introduces Nate to Jesus. Thank you. gospel lesson this morning is found in the book of John. The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I have said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus the son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. 
Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before, before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The words of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. After opening with a beautiful creation story created in the form of a hymn, John's Gospel introduces John the Baptizer. But in this Jesus story, John does not baptize Jesus. Rather, his role is to introduce us to Jesus. On the second day of the story, John sees Jesus and says to no one in particular, but to all of us who will listen, here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The sin of the world. Here's the one who takes away the sin of the world. So John's role in this gospel story is to introduce us to Jesus. And John says right up front, this is the one who takes away the sin of the world. He takes it away. He takes the sin away. Now, what is it that Jesus takes away? Jesus takes away the sin, singular, not plural, the sin of the world. Sin recognizes and emphasizes the world's collective brokenness. Not our individual human sins, faults, or failures, but the world's collective brokenness. This is important. Jesus has taken away the world's collective brokenness. The power of our broken condition has been destroyed. So why is there so much evil, so much violence in our nation's capital and in our states and in our communities and around the world? If the power of our broken condition has really been destroyed, why will some children in Clarksville, Tennessee go to bed hungry tonight, cold and physically and sexually abused? If the power of our broken condition has really been destroyed, why are there homeless people in Clarksville, Tennessee? John declares that Jesus is the one who takes away the sin, our collective brokenness. Some of my friends have rescue dogs. Some of the stories they tell me breaks my heart. I've heard horror stories that some small Yorkshire Terriers have lived through. When my, when my friends first adopt these dogs, the dogs are confused, frightened and they can be difficult to be around. The ones that make a turnaround do so because of the unconditional love they receive from their new humans. One of my friends takes in foster children. One little boy has seen more violence than most of us as adults will ever see in our lives. When Troy and Becca took him in, he was confused, frightened, and very difficult to be around. Like the adopted Yorkshire Terrier, 
the power of evil had been removed from his life, but the effects of that evil lingered. The lingering effects might cause the Yorkie to act out in unacceptable ways to a lot of dog keepers, and the lingering effects caused this little boy to act out in ways that would be unacceptable for many foster parents, but Becky and Troy loved their new child, and they set in motion the steps to adopt him as their son. And the son began slowly to come out of his brokenness because of the consistent love he was receiving. Jesus has taken away the sin, the collective brokenness of your life. You have been given the opportunity to live above the violence that rages in your inner being. You no longer have to participate in the violence of sin. That violence surfaces in many different ways in our lives. We all see the effect of violence around us. We see domestic abuse, school shootings, animal cruelty, road rage, insurrections, just to name a few. But violence goes even deeper still. Among the most insidious is the way we talk about those we disagree with or those we don't like without thinking of the consequences of our words. But John says the power of sin has been broken. That's good news. So in today's story, Jesus finds Philip. Now, Philip is invited to partner with Jesus to be one of the followers, to be a disciple. And Philip recognizes this good news. Philip recognizes in Jesus what John has told us about this remarkable man. Here is the one who takes away the sin, the collective brokenness of the world. If John and Philip are correct, and I think they are, this Jesus is a man I want to know. And if Jesus is who he is said to be, He's someone I want to share with those that I love. That was the experience of Philip. So Philip finds Nathaniel and introduces him to Jesus in a way that Nathaniel can relate. You see, in their day, many Jews were expecting God to send a, a new leader, a Messiah. And Philip introduces Jesus as this expected leader that they've already been in conversation about, that they've been looking for, thinking about, talking about, longing for. And Philip offers Nathaniel an invitation. Now, as I said, I believe John was correct about Jesus. I think Philip got it right. I'm excited to be one of the disciples of Jesus, and I want my friends to know Jesus as I have come to know Jesus. But how do I convince my friends that Jesus is the one they should follow? Because, let's face it, to follow Jesus means to change your current way of living and live the way Jesus teaches his followers to live. So I suggest that we do that invitation and introduction the same way Philip did. Sure, I've, I've seen all of the fancy ways created to prove to people that Jesus is God, that Jesus is the Messiah, that Jesus is the Christ, but I'm not much impressed. I've tried too many of those ways to be impressed. It's only when I've tried it Philip's way that I'm both comfortable and most effective. Did you notice what Philip did? 
Or perhaps, to some of you, it's more surprising to notice what Philip didn't do. Philip didn't ask Nathanael to surrender his life to Jesus. Philip didn't ask Nathanael where would he spend eternity if he died tonight in his sleep. Philip didn't present four spiritual laws or some Roman's road to salvation. If you don't know what those are, you probably were not raised in a strict evangelical church. And trust me, that's okay. Philip didn't use any of those either. In fact, Philip didn't ask Nathaniel to change in any way. So what did Philip do that today's story presents as being so successful? Philip found Nathaniel. Now, if you stop right here, you might misunderstand this as Philip out looking for someone to share this good news with, and Nathaniel comes along. But if you, if you follow the conversation Philip has with Nathaniel, a whole new picture begins to unfold and develop. Philip already knows Nathaniel. Philip and Nathaniel have already had conversations about the need of finding this new leader. Listen to what Philip says to Nathaniel. This is not the introduction of some new line of thought. This is the continuation of a previous discussion. Philip leads with, we found him. <laughs> They've already had this discussion, but now Philip believes that he has located the person that they've talked about that they've hoped for. We have found him about whom Moses and the law and all of the prophets wrote. Now, Philip already knows Nathaniel. They've already had the discussion. It's ongoing. So Philip doesn't need to explain what he means about this description. He, he doesn't need to explain what he thinks Moses says in the law or what he thinks the prophets have proclaimed. Now, they've already talked about this. And we're listening in on the middle of an ongoing conversation. But Nathaniel objects. You get friends like that. I do. I love it. Nathaniel objects immediately. Nathaniel discounts Philip's supposed discovery. I mean, Philip told Nathaniel that Jesus from, was from Nazareth. Nathaniel knows Nazareth. Nazareth was a poor neighborhood with a bad reputation. Can anything come out of a poor neighborhood with a bad reputa reputation, uh, Nathaniel asks? Now, here's the part I really want you to get. This is why Philip's invitation works. Remember, Philip is not introducing a new topic. Philip is talking to a friend about an ongoing conversation. Philip has made a new discovery within this ongoing conversation, and this is what Philip now presents to Nathaniel. Philip is saying, I believe Jesus is the one we've been looking for. Now, watch this. Here it is. Nathaniel wants proof. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? This is where Philip should pull out his first century equivalent to the four spiritual laws or Romans road to salvation, right? And just prove his point. Oh, this is the perfect place for a learned, memorized presentation on why Jesus is who I say Jesus is. But what does Philip say? Come and see. <laughs> Wait, what? What kind of answer is that? Well, I think it just might be the best answer. Come and see. Find out for yourself. Let Jesus do the convincing. Our story continues. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. See what just happened? Nathanael wants proof. Philip says, hang out with me and let's just see what happens. 
And what happens is Jesus does what only Jesus can do. Oh, and by the way, this is what people do when they attend church for a while or enter our Zoom room devotional or, or Bible studies. They, they're hanging out to see if you will love and accept them. Not for who you want them to be, but for who they are. Sure, we introduce our friends to a new way of life in Jesus. This is just a natural outgrowth of, of who you are. Someone asks, well, what did you do this weekend? You simply reply, well, I went to church where I have these great friends, or, or whatever moved you that week. It's just a natural conversation. Your friend responds, yeah, you're really getting into all that church stuff, aren't you? What do you see in that anyway? Oh, there it is. There's Nathaniel's question. His objection, can anything good come out of that? What do you see in that anyway? There you've got an opportunity to say, hey, come and see. I like the close friends I'm making. You ought to come and see what you think. The invitation. We share our life in Jesus the way we share our latest great discovery. I've discovered iced tea since moving to Clarksville. Now, I've never liked iced tea. But a friend said to me one day, here, try this, and she pushed her glass across the table. That day, I discovered Milo's famous iced tea flavored with Monin's mango syrup. It's delicious, but, but don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself. If you want a sample, stop by the house. I'll share some with you. Come on, let's see. Let us pray. All-knowing and loving God, from the very beginning of life, you watched over us, and you guided us in the way that we are to go. Glory to you, God. Great and glorious are your many works, yet you know each of us as your own children. We sing praises to your holy name. You have created us and known us in every way. You have provided everything that we need for the sustaining of our bodies. And because we are yours, we are called to be pure and holy in your sight. But we neglect our bodies. We do not care for them as stewards. We abuse them by the ways in which we choose to live, and thereby we dishonor you. Forgive us, O oh God, and claim us once more. God, you called Philip, and he found Nathaniel, as was in our lesson today, and brings him to Jesus. And Nathaniel declares Jesus to be the Son of God, the King of Israel. And you also called the young boy Samuel, who heard God calling. And you call us the same way, Lord. Give us that same spirit so that we might be empowered to be prophets in this modern day, carrying your message of salvation to all the world. We stumble in answering your call because we are hesitant. We know of others, and some of whom we have named earlier in the message today, and others who are known to you alone, who cannot follow because they are weighed down with infirmities of the body, pain of the mind, or burdens in their spirits. Visit them with your healing grace and restore them. As you would have us answer you, so now answer us. We, as we pray in the name of Jesus, Christ our Lord, amen.
So today, we saw Phil introduce Nate to Jesus, Philip and Nathaniel. And it was just part of a natural, ongoing conversation. Like Phil, we already know how to introduce our friends to our interests. Let me show you what I mean. Hey, Robert, come here. Robert, on, on New Year's Eve, I watched Wonder Woman, the new one, Wonder Woman 1984. And oh, it was a great movie. Have you seen it yet? No, I haven't. Oh, oh Robert, you got to see it. Look, you're going to like it. You will like this movie. You got to see it. So it's really good, huh? It is, it is really good. I haven't really considered actually going to it. No, you know, if, 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 if the theaters were open and we could go, I'd, I'd like to go with you because I'd like to experience that with you. But, but I do, I want you to see it. Do you see what I just did? I saw this movie that I was enjoying. I was impressed. Robert's friend. I think Robert would enjoy it. it it's just natural for me to to tell Robert about something that I like and find meaning in and want to share it with him. And it's nice and simple, too. It reminds me of the old keep it simple, stupid idea, but it's, <laughs> and it's effective. Yes, kiss, keep it simple. Stupid, not keep it stupid, simple, but <laughs> keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Um, it, 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 you didn't feel pressured, did you? No, but it actually reminded me of some people I haven't talked to for a while. Yeah, maybe I need to think of people to reconnect with. So then.